everyone, how's everyone for today? This is Mark Perry, back at you with another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about capitalization rate. What is a capitalization rate and how to apply that into real estate, whether it's residential or commercial. So that's today's topic, let's dive right in. So, but before we dive right in, if you haven't already, feel free to go to Amazon, check out my book, give yourself a second chance, change in the way, your self-image is changing the way you think, changing the way you view things, changing the way you see things. This book can share with you and it can show you techniques and strategies of how you can change the way you think and change the way your self-image is. So check that book out. And then my lastly book is Shifting Your Mind from Property to Prosperity. Changing the way you think. It's kind of like the same as this other book, but the other book is about changing identity. This book is about changing the images in your mind and changing the thought patterns in your mind. So definitely go check those two books out. They're both on Amazon. And um, without further ado, let's dive right in. So capitalization rate. What is a capitalization rate? What is that? So capitalization rate is just basically what lenders, what, uh, what lenders use and what other brokers use to determine the, the percentage that you're getting on your money. So the, the return you get on your money. So in short terms, we usually call it short for cap, cap rate. So that's usually what we call it. We call it cap rate. Hey, what's the cap rate on this property? What's the cap rate on this commercial uh, building? What is the cap rate? A lot of times the brokers will let you know what the cap rate is. You know, they'll let you know what that cap rate is because it's really simple to do. It's really easy for them to understand and determine the value and what you're buying this property off of based on if you paid it all cash for it. Now remember, cap rate is what you pay cash for. Now, if you're gonna go get a loan from a bank, then the cap rate changes, you know, but it's actually better if you go get a loan from the bank because your cap rate actually goes up. So let's just say, for instance, hypothetically, let's say if you bought a building, apartment building for a million dollars, right? You bought that apartment building, building for a million dollars and the NOI on that apartment building was $100,000. So how do you find out what the cap rate is? How do you find out if I invest a million dollars based on the NOI is 100,000, what will my return be on my money? What is that cap rate? So you just take that million dollars and then you divide it by $100,000 and that will give you a 10% cap rate. So basically, if you go buy the building and you buy the building for a million dollars. And the NOI, after all the expenses, so you have the gross, and you have the NOI after all the expenses, let's say it's $100,000. $100,000, what you're gonna get on that million dollars, if you pay cash, you're gonna get a 10% return. Now in today's world, it's challenging to find those returns for apartment buildings just because uh, the, the price, the cap rates are so low because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, people out there that has money and there's too many people chasing one product. So it makes the cap rates lower. So the demand is high for apartment buildings. The demand is high for self storage and mobile home parks. Everything is high right now. That's why you're starting to see low cap rates. So low cap rates will determine the demand of the money and the supply that is out there. There's not enough supply, but there's a lot of demand. That's the reason why you see a lot of uh, low cap rates. But when you start to see high cap rates, 10%, 12%, uh, 15%. When you start to see high cap rates, that's just basically showing you that there's a lot of supply, but not enough demand. There's a lot of apartment buildings, there's a lot of inventory out there, but there's not a lot of money chasing that inventory. You get what I'm saying? There's not a lot of money chasing it. So that's where you'll see the, the higher cap rates. But in today's world, we've got lower cap rates. So understand that, you know, if you're going to pay cash for any property, if you're going to pay for cash for anything, understand what your NOI is or understand what your net income is. You know, if it's on a rental property, understand what that number is. And then you just time, you divide that by whatever down payment you put down or whatever cash you put down. So let's just say hypothetically you bought, you was buying a rental property. So let's say you're buying a rental property for 50 K, right? You was buying a rental property for 50 K. And let's say on that rental property, you paid a $50,000 in cash for it. But let's say if that rental property was making, uh, let's just say it was making a net, it, it, was, it was bringing in gross revenue, maybe about 15,000. And let's say your net income is about 10 after you pay taxes, insurance, property management, vacancy, and so forth. So you're about $10,000, 10K in net income. So you just take that 10,000, divide it by the $50,000. 
So that's roughly about a 10%, that's roughly about a 10% cap rate, right? So you just take that $50,000, right? We're gonna do the calculations real quick. Um, so you take the $50,000, so you take the $10,000 first, and then you divide that by 50,000, I think it's 10%. So no, 20%, I'm sorry, my numbers are wrong. <laughs> but you're, you're looking at about a 20% return, 20% return on that $50,000. So what does that mean? So that means in $10,000, 10, you're gonna be making in net income, times that by five. So that means in five years, five years, five years, you will be, you will basically have the property paid off in five years. Because if you take the 10,000 times five, you'll have the property paid off in five years. So that means all your chips are off the table of $50,000 cash that you put into this property. So you pay $50,000 for, for the property, $10,000 in net income, you divide that, you had a 20% return, and then you're gonna get your money back in five years. So is that a good return to you? It's a good return to me, because you can get it back in five years. So I hope that this video helped, but let's just kind of recap. Capitalization rate, that's what the banks will determine it, but in for short, for investors like myself and other people, we call it short for cap rate. What is the cap rate on this apartment building? What is the cap rate on this self storage? So, and by determining that, let's say if somebody sent us apartment building, they sent us the numbers, we found out they want a million dollars for it. Then they sent us the, the, the T12, which is the, um, the trailing 12, to where you can know where your gross and then your expenses are. So once you did the numbers and you're like, okay, this building is bringing in about $100,000 a year. Okay, great. They want me to pay a million dollars for it. Now, if I don't go to the bank and get a loan for it, I'll pay the million dollars in cash. Okay, great. So if I'm making $100,000 right now in, in the building, that means I'll be getting a 10% return on my money. That means I'll probably have this building paid off in 10 years. You know, in 10 years, I'll have this building paid off. So, and that's the same way on, re on rental property. So if you're buying a, a property for 50,000, and let's say if your net is 10,000, you divide that, you're at a 20% cap. 20% return is what they say. It could be a return, it could be cap, it's kind of the same thing. You had a 20% return and you'll have this property paid off in five years. So I hope this video helps. And also as well, if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, just in case I put any more videos out there. I know I've been away for a little bit. I've been really been focusing on my business and my brand. And uh, I got to get back to more uh, YouTube videos to share with individuals out there that wants to get involved in real estate, wants to know a little bit more about real estate and finding ways to where they can get involved into this business with little or to no money down. So I hope this helped guys and I definitely talk to you soon. Take care.